Welcome to Video Workbench, and on today's episode, I discuss how you can replace a part that you are either missing or broke with Abe's two-part epoxy sculpt. Now, the Abe's two-part epoxy sculpt is much like the epoxy sculpt that you get in a tube and have to mix. But the difference is, is that Abe's epoxy sculpt is more like a paste that you have to mix in equal parts and let set for a while to get the results that you are looking for. Now, Abe's epoxy sculpt works with plastic and with resin and with anything else that you need to fix. It's very easy to work with, it's user friendly, and um, it's pretty much for me a no brainer to use with any kit that I have a missing or broken part with. And if I need to make a part that isn't available, Aves can handle it. So, why don't we get to the video? Uh, sometimes mistakes happen and uh, unfortunately with this metal section on the opposite side of this rail the middle section here with the ball uh, came out uh, it was during the sanding process and unfortunately during that time uh, it had been lost so now uh, I will get the actual section that is missing the part and there you go it's missing and it needs to be replaced so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this piece right here and I'm going to take some AB's epoxy and I'm going to make a ball that will fit over this part and I will glue it on here and you won't even tell the difference that uh, it wasn't even part of this uh, saddle. So uh, I will go about showing you how I will uh, put the AB's two-part epoxy sculpt on this piece and attach it to this rail. I've mixed AB's epoxy sculpt part A and part B. I've mixed it into a ball that's the same diameter as all the other balls on the armrests. What I will do is I will let this ball dry overnight so that it's nice and hard. I will then drill a hole the same diameter as this peg. I will then glue the peg into the ball and then I will glue it right into the armrest. And then once there is um, primer on there and paint you won't tell the difference you won't be able to tell at all so uh, I will show you that next step uh, after this ball is dry and uh, I get both parts together now that the bead that I created is completely dry from sitting overnight I will drill a hole through it using a 1 16th drill bit I now have a hole drilled directly through the center of the bead. I will now place this piece of resin rod right through the center. I will put a little bit of glue on the inside of the bead so that the rod will hold. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put the super glue that I'm using inside of the hole using a toothpick so I can get in there and now I'm going to place the rod inside of the bead I'm going to slide it right through the hole I have to 
use a little bit of force to do it. Okay, now it's through, and that's it. Now I'll let that dry for a little bit, and I will then attach it to the rail right underneath here so that it'll look just like the other side of the rail. Now the part is attached, and it looks pretty close to the part that was missing or cut off during the time it was being sanded and it looks very close to the other rail the one that's on the left that has no damage to it at all so as you can see by using AB's epoxy sculpt uh, you can pretty much replace any part if you have other parts to work off of for a master so that you can uh, just replace the part and hopefully not be able to have that part noticed by other people pretty much just by yourself. So use AV's epoxy sculpt whenever you're in a pinch and you need to replace a part. And now the final result. With primer applied, you can see that there really isn't too much of a difference. Just the plain fact that they are opposite sides of the center where the balls are are pretty close to one another with the primer applied you cannot really make too much of a difference and that's the effect that you want you as the model builder only want to know where things have been repaired or replaced and uh, with the AV's epoxy sculpt you can achieve uh, replacing parts filling in gaps and sculpting your own pieces and once the primer is applied, there you go. The end result. One part looks like the other. Blending a seam is next. On a 10 inch tall bust of Cyclops. The seam is located where the jaw and head meet. I mix equal parts A and B of AB's epoxy sculpt together making sure both parts are mixed thoroughly. I take the mixed AV's epoxy sculpt and thin it out so that I can put it into and around the gap between the jaw and head, thinning it out enough to fill the gap and just enough to go around it. I gently apply the epoxy sculpt in and around the seam. I start on one end and work my way around. Making sure that I'm gently pressing the epoxy sculpt into the seam. Using the pointed end of a sculpting tool, I begin to press and form the epoxy sculpt more. Making sure that I have just enough on either side of the seam. I press the epoxy sculpt as deep as I can into the seam. I take off the axis epoxy sculpt, leaving enough to fill the seam. leaving enough so I can use AV's safety solvent to smooth and blend the jaw and head together. Using a paintbrush, I dip it into the safety solvent and gently brush it on the epoxy skull, smoothing it out so that I don't have to use sandpaper. It's time to move on to painting. I cover the mouth with painter's tape airbrush on a light base color, followed up with a darker color to match the rest of the model. The seam is gone and the parts are blended together. All you need 
is parts A and B of AV's epoxy sculpt and AV safety solvent to smooth it out. I hope that you enjoyed this video and learned a little bit on how to use Abe's epoxy sculpt. It's very easy to use and it's very easy to order. You can order online at avestudio.com. And that's it for this episode of Video Workbench. Thank you for your support and model on.